Now, we have, I'm sorry, I'm going to butcher your name really bad. Defy Donna of the Nation Council of Arabic Americans. Okay. Good, evening. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. I'm really, really honored to speak to you on this special day. And I'm equally honored to speak as an indigenous Palestinian, an indigenous Arab. I'm saying this because, like all the indigenous peoples of Americas, Australia, and Africa, we Arabs know quite well the significance of this day, the significance of being in the streets, the significance of being visible. Today, we indigenous peoples of the world are more visible than ever. We are visible in the streets of D.C., the streets of Palestine, and our visibility is our, our very existence strongly defies the settlers' discourse of negation, the white settlers' discourse of exclusion, but we are here. We are visible, and our visibility is power. Today it's an is an opportunity to realize how deeply we are connected as indigenous and oppressed people all over the world. From the moment the Europeans embarked on colonizing the rest of the world, our fate, the fate of the indigenous peoples, became interconnected. So the European colonization not only oppressed us, but also connected us and made our fate one. So you can be sure that as Native Americans, we Arabs, and particularly we Palestinians, realize the existential challenges you face every day. We realize the problems you have, but you can also be sure that we know your feelings, we know your resistance, and also we realize and know and feel your hopes because we have the same feelings, the same hopes, and the same challenges. We also believe that the Palestinian people's resistance to Israeli colonialism is a proof of our understanding of your problems and your challenges in this continent, in North America, South America, and also in Australia and Africa, and everywhere there is an indigenous people and there is an oppressed people. Of course, the inverse is also true. We know that all your achievements, all your struggle, are also real and great contributions to the struggle of the peoples of Palestine and the struggle of the Arab people and to the struggle of natives everywhere. From the moment the Europeans embarked on colonizing the rest of the world, the fate of us, our fate, the fate of all the indigenous and oppressed people, as I said, became interconnected. From the moment, from that moment, the indigenous people in North America, in South America, in the Arab homeland, in Africa, did not lose their freedom only. And they did not lose their, even their lives. Equally important, and this is really the significance of this day, we lost our voice and we lost our ability to tell the story, our story, and the story and the suffer of the suffering of our people and oppression of our ancestors. So to us, to me, and to Palestinians and Arabs everywhere, the Indigenous Peoples Day is about truth. Today is about the Indigenous Peoples truth, not the white settlers' false truth. To us, it's about having a voice, the voice of the oppressed that tells our story despite and in spite the loud voice and the loud and powerful voice of the oppressor. That's why our visibility today, as I said, is important. Our visibility in the streets, in the parks, in the media is power. For we know that the truth is thoroughly imbued with relations of power. And to be visible, is to be powerful and to 
receive recognition of our story. We meet today, not only in D.C., but everywhere in the world there are oppressed people and indigenous people to proclaim our indigenous truth and to defy and reject the settlers' false truth initiated by the Columbus Day and the, by the Columbia, Columbus in, colonial venture. We meet to declare that it is time for the world to unlearn the false settlers' truth, the Columbus false truth that denies the very humanity of billions of indigenous people all over the world. And it is time for the world to learn the indigenous truth and to know about the suffering and the oppression of the indigenous people everywhere. In Palestine and all over the Arab homeland, we, call, we came to know this fact very well. Every day for us is an indigenous people's day. Every day for us is a day of struggle because to our oppressors, every day is also a Columbus day. In Palestine, we call our indigenous people's day the Nakba day. We commemorate that day on May 15 of every year because on that day in 1948, European settlers colonized and stole our homeland. They uprooted our people and forcefully expelled hundreds of thousands of them into exile. Now they number about 8 million people in exile and established a, a settler colonial state on a soil that is full with the corpses and bones of our ancestors. Our homeland was stolen and we were denied even the right to live. We were denied the right to exist. And on top of all that, we were demonized as the aggressors. But on that day, our fate became intertwined with the fate of every native and every oppressed people on this planet. Our fate became interconnected with all the victims of colonialism and imperialism. And like the indigenous people of North America and South America, Australia and Africa, and like the oppressed people all over the world, we know that reclaiming our right to live, denied by settler colonialism and Western imperialism, reclaiming our right to our land, stolen and conquered by marauding settlers, begins here, begins with reclaiming the truth and reclaiming the, the voice and telling our story. And similar to the false settler truth of Columbus Day, colonial Zionism's discourse silenced by power, silenced every non-Zionist history in Palestine and claimed the history of Palestine as the history of Zionism in Palestine only. And while the soil of our homeland is full with corpses and bones of our ancestors, we are denied the free we are not only denied the freedom to be we are denied the right to live there we are even denied the right to tell our story the story of the suffering and oppression of our people from ethnic cleansing and expulsion to massacres and land theft today is a chance to tell our story and remind the world that we are here and palestinians everywhere Arabs everywhere are telling this story on this particular day. But as I said, to us, like every oppressed people, every day is an indigenous day. But the indigenous people's day of 2020 is really particularly significant. We meet here in Washington, D.C., in Malcolm X's park of all places, like we meet everywhere all over the globe. But we meet in D.C. in Malcolm X's Park as our black brothers and sisters in the African-American community and in the Black Lives Matter movement fight their struggle for justice and teach the world and teach us really too. Yes, again, that the struggle of indigenous and oppressed peoples all over the world is the driving force of progress for all humanity. It teaches the world that the struggle of the oppressed and indigenous peoples is undoubtedly the essential characteristic of contemporary history. 
brothers and sisters and comrades to give it more political meaning. Our struggle as an indigenous and oppressed people everywhere is one. But our task isn't only to liberate our peoples and, the, and end their oppression and suffering. The task the indigenous peoples carry on their shoulders is also to liberate the oppressors themselves as well and reclaim their humanity, a humanity they lost as they impart on colonizing the rest of the world and oppressing their fellow man. It is an enormously a difficult undertaking, but the future of, of humanity depends on it. The future of humanity depends on us, the indigenous and the oppressed people of the world. The future of the world, the freedom of the world, depends on our struggle. But I'm very optimistic. After 500 years, despite all the oppression, despite all the suffering, after 500 years of European colonialism and Western imperialism, the indigenous and oppressed peoples are still here fighting. And the indigenous day, the indigenous people's day today is a proof of that. 500 years of oppression and the indigenous people are more visible than ever. That's why I'm optimistic. 500 years and even more probably, but particularly from the revolution in San Domingo and Haiti in 1790, to Jerusalem today and DC today, the struggle continues. We never, we never lost hope. We will never lose hope. We should not lose hope because not only our fate depends on it, not the fate of our children and grandchildren in the future, but the fate of humanity. Thank you very much. And again, greetings from all the Palestinians and Arab people to the indigenous people everywhere, but particularly the indigenous people of Native America, of, of, of North America. Thank you very much and carry on.